So future squid here. I've tried to record this video so many different times and so many different days. Um, and I just could not get my thoughts across or wherever. And I was trying to make sure that I can narrow down the video and make it as short as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys right now, if you're looking for an audio comparison of the Tonar TD510 to other microphones in my possession, there will be an unlisted video linked in the description that's going to uh, compare the, on the raw sound or wherever of the microphones all together or wherever so you can make an informed decision if you want this microphone or another microphone and there will be affiliate links to the products that i mentioned today uh down in the description or wherever so you can check those out with that being said i'm going to go ahead and show you guys what you can do to get the tonar td510 to actually sound good and sound usable wherever for a use case scenario that's other than live streaming because in my personal opinion there are other microphones out there that's going to do a better job with working with the likes of the elgato i would say wave xlr with the Wavelink software and you can use those microphones for talking head videos like this one if you're talking to your audience for just chatting or you're actually playing video games or something like that or just general use content creation if you're stepping out of the realm of doing stuff like that and you want something that can record internally straight into a camera and do podcasts and stuff like that with people I would say that are actually in your space together and not like over discord then I would recommend the setup that I'm going to be talking about in today's video which is the common Adcaster C2 working with the Tonar TD510 and I would recommend this setup again if you want to record straight into a camera or you're looking for a flat sound or wherever signal that's being sent out to your laptop for your recordings or something like that and you want something that's going to sound good when you go into DaVinci Resolve or you're going into Adobe After Effects or something like that to actually manipulate the the audio signal wherever and EQ it to your liking. The Tonar TD510 is going to be great for this use case scenario, but don't listen to the other reviewers out there on YouTube who are saying this microphone is the budget Shure SM7B because that's a straight up lie. And also don't listen to the other people out there who are going to tell you that um, the Tonar TD510 is kind of somewhat unusable because again, these people don't know what the use case scenario for this microphone is actually, I would say, made for this microphone is made for podcasting this microphone is made to be used with i would say semi-professional to professional i would say audio interfaces where through the xlr port yes it's common to see these kind of microphones that have a usb port as well but the signal is unusable and yes the headphone port like everybody complains about in the reviews on youtube is unusable as well for direct live monitoring but if you don't care about listening to direct live monitoring or you have an audio interface that allows you to monitor through that interface, then I would just suggest doing that and still picking up this microphone because the, the signal that you can get out of it and the audio quality that you can get out of this microphone, if you do the steps that are listed in this video, then you can get a really good usable, I would say, sound out of this microphone. I would not use it with the likes of a cheap audio interface like the, uh, like I said, the Fine Fine SC3 or the Wave XLR, or even, don't even even pick up this one or whatever that Mayano sent out because it no longer works for me anymore. It's just, it's just a brick. It won't even hold a charge. It won't even really turn on or whatever for long periods of time. So don't cheap out on your gear when you're getting stuff or wherever anyways, when it comes to content creation. But I will say that you don't need to get the likes of the Rodecaster Duo or something like that, like some people have done in their reviews, because those things are $400, $500, $600, wherever audio interfaces. And if you're purchasing some like, something like that, then yes, I would say get something along the lines of the Shure SM7B or something along those lines as far as somewhat of an expensive quality, I would say, microphone to match the quality interface that you're getting. If you're new to content creation and you want to do podcasts or maybe you have a guest or whatever in your videos, like a significant other or something like that friend or wherever you want to sit down at a table and you want a audio xlr audio interface to be able to uh you know control audio and all that stuff while you're both talking into the microphone and you know processing that signal into recording software and then eq it afterwards then the comica adcaster c2 mixed with the tonar td510 is going to be really good because it has two xlr inputs as well as a 3.5 millimeter jack on the back and it's going to like i said control the overall sound of the microphone because i'll show you guys in a minute but the microphone is a little bit too boomy for use case scenario so what is on the adcaster c2 from comica is the highs the mids the lows control so you can you know pretty much manipulate that signal before it's sent into your recording software or into your camera or whatever so when you apply eqs in editing or you apply eqs through like let's say the wavelength software 
that signal is different than the one that's purely coming out of the microphone itself because there's a middleman there that's changing stuff before it gets sent to the software or before it gets sent into your editing suite. So that's why I recommend something like the Comica. Now people will say there's are cheaper audio interfaces out there that have you know the highs, the mids, the lows controls, but they're not typically from a actual semi-professional to professional audio company if they have those controls. They might be on the cheaper end below $180 or below $100, but again, the quality of the components come into question. So again, if somebody knows in the comments down below that has a cheaper audio interface that allows you to control the highs and mids and lows, it's a good quality of components inside and it's from a reputable brand that's an actual audio company. And then Elgato with the Wave XLR or wherever, it's good for, I would say, 90% of microphones out there because they don't need this type of middleman manipulation like the Tonar does. But again, this is from a actual audio company again they make wireless lavalier systems they make camera accessories they make you know audio i would say microphones shotgun microphones all that stuff so they kind of know what audio needs to be happening wherever on an audio interface like the comica adcaster c2 again review of it linked in the description so you're gonna need something like that in order to audio signal to sound good so i just want to go ahead and preface that i've tried to record this video multiple times like i said over a course of multiple days and it's coming up on the due date where for this video so leaving a like on the chat on the video and subscribing to the channel will be very very helpful so let's go ahead and talk about the tonar td 510 and uh give you my thoughts and opinions on it in the use case scenario so now we're on the td 510 from tonar you could probably hear i would say the boominess or the bassiness of this microphone and yes if you move the microphone further away and you talk to it or wherever it's probably going to clear up that muddiness and i have a deeper voice like i said than most people because there's like a Eight point something billion people on the face of the planet when you eq a microphone like this straight from the get-go from the manufacturer you're gonna alienate and make a lot of people not want to have this microphone because some people don't like muddiness in their voice some people don't like the overbearingness of the bass or whatever a lot of people listen to content from their cell phone you know nowadays or in their car or something like that and that might be too much bass for somebody who's listening to this on a podcast or a youtube video or maybe even a live stream you know what i'm saying so you're gonna have to tone our in the future when you make microphones like this don't add that tweaking or wherever from the manufacturer don't add that special thing that podcasters was talking about in this video about some kind of science in there or wherever because like i said there's like a five to ten second delay after you stop talking the microphone's like searching to see if you're still talking i'll play that clip in a second but it's more prevalent especially when you turn up the db so be careful wearing headphones because i'm gonna have to do that in post or wherever so you can hear what i'm talking about and then once you hear it and you watch other people's reviews because nobody really mentioned this that that happens or wherever they just talk about the boominess and that's really it um you're gonna once you hear that you're gonna hear it in other reviews so the only thing that you guys can hear is my pc and you probably can't hear it with you know no background noise removal no nothing or wherever applied but there is a like weird like like i said noise gate or something like that so I'm going to put on the background noise removal and I can hear it staticky like white noise. You have to kind of listen for it, but it's definitely audible. So a good way for me to do that is to turn up the DB. So I'm going to turn it up to like 50, right? And you can hear it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can definitely hear it. I've been looking at headsets instead of gotcha. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just weird. And I'm telling you, that's not like the background noise removal. The background noise removal just makes it like more obvious. And if you're going to run like a noise gate or a background noise removal or something like that, it's noticeable. And it's even more noticeable once you start applying certain EQs or wherever to make your voice sound different uh, or like to remove more stuff. Because it's still going. And this is a lower EQ. So, yeah, that's why I'm like, I don't know if I recommend this microphone.
and like of course like it's it, the higher db you do or whatever the more sensitive and more you can hear it but the problem is is that if you're playing like if you're playing music and stuff in the background you're streaming and everything like you're i would say doing like other things like game music all that stuff then it's not going to bother you too much because you know it's going to be drowned out of everything but if you have like lo-fi low music playing and you're using this for a voiceover or like a podcast scenario or something like that that noise people are going to pick up on that and that's not what you want so and i've tested a lot of microphones in the past none of them have this and I, like I said, I'm not an audio engineer. I don't know the ins and outs and stuff like that. I'm not like podcastage, wonderful content creator. He can deep dive and show you things wherever about microphones that you won't even know. So with that being said, I'm still going to tell you how to clean up that signal and make sure that doesn't happen or wherever. And what I found out is that this microphone, like I keep saying, is only really geared towards talking head videos and podcasting. What I'm going to do is show you guys how you can clean up the signal from sounding like this to sounding more like this. Now this is probably, I would say, a little bit of a flatter tone. What I've done is manipulate that signal before it goes into the Wavelink software that's recording this into OBS. So again, it might sound like a little flatter tone. Um, so it's probably a little bit more bearable than the boominess and everything. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn on the EQs in the Wavelink software so you can hear how this microphone sounds. Now, the EQs in the the Wavelink software has been turned on and those EQs are similar to having a noise removal or background noise removal. It has a de-esser, noise, no noise gate or anything like that because I found some issues with trying to run a noise gate with this microphone, especially with EQs applied. And then we have just like an EQ curve or wherever on the microphone itself as well to kind of bring in the muddiness a little bit or wherever and kind of bring down the presence just a little bit and stuff like that to make it sound more of a podcasty voice or wherever because again we interrupted that signal that's being processed on the actual xlr interface before it got sent to the pc for capturing i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how this signal sounds or wherever by using a fan that I usually have like a arm's length away when I do these types of videos. And I'm gonna have it turned on level four, as you can see right here, and it's blowing straight to me and straight to the microphone. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it up to level eight. And this is how the signal sounds and stuff like that. All right, so this is just default, no EQs applied in Wavelink, no EQs applied or adjustments done or wherever on the Comica at Caster C2. The gain is still the same. The overall volume of the microphone is still the same. And you could probably hear that fan or wherever. And I'm gonna turn it down to level four. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys that if you're looking for an audio comparison of all the microphones that I have in my possession in comparison to this microphone, there will be an unlisted video down in the description. There will also be affiliate links down in the description for this microphone. I'm gonna go ahead and turn all the EQs back on. Okay, so all the EQs should be back on. And again, the microphone is still picking up probably the fan a little bit or something like that, or maybe not at all. It's still on at level four. And I'm just going to leave it on for the rest of the time of this video. So to wrap up this video, having that manipulation or whatever for that signal before you capture it is very, very important with a microphone like this. And that's really good, like I said, for podcasting. So again, make an informed decision on your purchases taking into account everything that I said today. Hopefully I cleared up some misunderstandings about this microphone in comparison to other, all the other YouTubers out there saying that this is the budget Shure SM7B and stuff. It, it's not. The Shure SM7B is the Shure SM7B. The Tonar TD510 is the Tonar TD510. Just like any other microphone out there, they are what they are. It's just which one do you like the sound of? Which one is going to be right for the type of content creation that you're trying to do? get the right tool for the right job. Sometimes that means getting a microphone at this price point. Sometimes it means getting a microphone that at the price point of the Shure SM7B. It's up to you what you wanna do. Don't let anybody clickbait you or change your, your mind or whatever about something or whatever, because at the end of the day, you're the one that's gonna have the product. You're the one that's gonna have to use the product. And if you go out and get this microphone without getting an actual audio interface that's gonna be able to handle and do what this microphone needs it to, uh, needs that audio interface to do to get the sound that you need to get out of the microphone, you're not gonna be a happy camper. I'm just telling you right now, you're not. Especially listening to a lot of these smaller content creators who are just 
just trying to be nice to a company so they can continue to get products you need to listen to actual honest reviews and a lot of those people out there that say that they are doing transparent honest reviews are lying to you be very very careful and tonar overall tdldr i do like this microphone i think it's really really good for what it's supposed to be used for I just think that in the future, if you come out with any other microphones, please, 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 whatever you're doing in the back of the microphone, cut that out. Just just cut it out, make it as flat as possible so people don't have to do workarounds and stuff like that to get the microphone to sound like this. This is how the microphone should sound when I tweak it just by plugging it into a XLR interface, not interrupting the signal, changing it up and then applying what I want to wherever for it. That's not how it's supposed to go. But with that being said, affiliate links down in the description. Y'all take care. Have a squid day. God bless you and yours. I'll catch you guys in the next one.